The Foundation series is a science fiction series by Isaac Asimov. For nearly 30 years, the series was a trilogy, Foundation, Foundation and Empire, Second Foundation. It won the one-time Hugo Award for Best All-Time Series in 1966. Asimov began adding to the series in 1981, with two sequels, Foundation's Edge, Foundation and Earth, and two prequels, Prelude to Foundation, Ford the Foundation. The additions made reference to events in Asimov's Robot and Empire series, indicating that they were also set in the same fictional universe. The premise of the series is that the mathematician Harry Seldon spent his life developing a branch of mathematics known as psychohistory, a concept of mathematical sociology. Using the laws of mass action, it can predict the future, but only on a large scale. Seldon foresees the imminent fall of the Galactic Empire, which encompasses the entire Milky Way, and a dark age lasting 30,000 years before a second great empire arises. Seldon also foresees an alternative where the interregnum will last only 1,000 years. To ensure the more favorable outcome, Seldon creates two foundations at opposite ends of the galaxy. Publication History Original Stories Foundation was originally a series of eight short stories published in Astounding Magazine between May 1942 and January 1950. According to Asimov, the premise was based on ideas set forth in Edward Gibbon's History of the Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, and was invented spontaneously on his way to meet with editor John W. Campbell, with whom he developed the concepts of the collapse of the Galactic Empire, the Civilization Preserving Foundations, and Psychohistory. Foundation Trilogy, the first four stories were collected, along with a new story taking place before the others, in a single volume published by Gnome Press in 1951 as Foundation. The remainder of the stories were published in pairs by Gnome as Foundation and Empire and Second Foundation, resulting in the Foundation Trilogy, as the series was known for decades. Later sequels and prequels, in 1981. Asimov was persuaded by his publishers to write a fourth book, which became Foundation's Edge. Four years later, Asimov followed up with yet another sequel, Foundation and Earth, which was followed by the prequels Prelude to Foundation and Ford the Foundation. During the two-year lapse between writing the sequels and prequels, Asimov had tied in his Foundation series with his various other series, creating a single unified universe. The basic link is mentioned in Foundation's Edge, an obscure tradition about a first wave of space settlements with robots and then a second without. Plot, Prelude to Foundation Prelude to Foundation opens on the planet Trantor, the Empire's capital planet, the day after Hari Seldon has given a speech at a conference. Several parties become aware of the content of his speech. Seldon is hounded by the Emperor and various employed thugs who are working surreptitiously which forces him into exile. Over the course of the book, Selden and Durs for Nabali, a female companion, are taken from location to location by an aide, Chetta Humin, who introduces them to various walks of life in his attempts to keep Selden hidden from the Emperor. Throughout their adventures all over Trantor, Selden continuously denies that psychohistory is a realistic science. Even if feasible, it may take several decades to develop. Humin, however, is convinced that Selden knows something, so he continuously presses him to work out a starting point to develop psychohistory. Eventually, after much traveling and introductions to various, diverse cultures on Trantor, Selden realizes that using the entire known galaxy as a starting point is too overwhelming, then decides to use Trantor as a model to work out the science, with the goal of using the applied knowledge on the rest of the galaxy. Ford the Foundation. Eight years after the events of Prelude, Selden has worked out the science of psychohistory and has applied it on a galactic scale. His notability and fame increase and he is eventually promoted to first minister to the emperor. As the book progresses, Selden loses those closest to him, including his wife, Durs van Abeli, as his own health deteriorates into old age. Having worked his entire adult life to understand psychohistory, Selden instructs his granddaughter, Wanda, to set up the second foundation. Foundation. Called forth to stand trial on Trantor for allegations of treason, 
Selden explains that his science of psychohistory foresees many alternatives, all of which result in the Galactic Empire eventually falling. If humanity follows its current path, the Empire will fall and 30,000 years of turmoil will overcome humanity before a second Empire arises. However, an alternative path allows for the intervening years to be only 1,000, if Selden is allowed to collect the most intelligent minds and create a compendium of all human knowledge, entitled Encyclopedia Galactica. The board is still wary, but allows Selden to assemble whomever he needs, provided he and the encyclopedists be exiled to a remote planet, Terminus. Selden agrees to set up his own collection of encyclopedists, and also secretly implements a contingency plan a Euro a second foundation a Euro at the opposite end of the galaxy. Once on Terminus, the inhabitants find themselves at a loss. With four powerful planets surrounding their own, the encyclopedists have no defenses but their own intelligence. The mayor of Terminus City, Salva Hardin, proposes to play the planets off against each other. His plan is a success, the Foundation remains untouched and he is promoted to mayor of Terminus. Meanwhile, the minds of the Foundation continue to develop new and greater technologies which are smaller and more powerful than the Empire's equivalents. Using its scientific advantage, Terminus develops trade routes with nearby planets, eventually taking them over when its technology becomes a much-needed commodity. The interplanetary traders effectively become the new diplomats to other planets. One such trader, Hobber Mello, becomes powerful enough to challenge and win the seat of mayor and by cutting off supplies to a nearby region, also succeeds in adding more planets to the Foundation's reach. Foundation and Empire The current Emperor of the Galaxy perceives the Foundation as a growing threat and orders an attack on it, using the Empire's still mighty fleet of war vessels. However, eventually convinced, as foretold by psychohistory, that his power would be most vulnerable to that of his own successful general, the Emperor finally orders withdrawal of his fleet. In spite of its undoubted inferiority in purely military terms, the Foundation emerges as the victor and the Empire itself is defeated. Meanwhile, an unknown outsider known as the Mule has begun taking over planets belonging to the Foundation at a rapid pace. When the Foundation comes to realize the Mule was not foreseen in Selden's plan, and there is no predicted way of defeating him, Toran and Beta Dariel, accompanied by Bling Mice Euro the galaxy's current greatest psychologist a Euro, and a street clown named Magnifico set out to find the second foundation, hoping they bring an end to the mule's reign. Eventually, working in the still-functional Great Library of Trantor, Miss comes to learn of the second foundation's whereabouts. They also deduce that the mule's success stems from his mutation. He is able to change the emotions of others, a power he used to first instill fear in the inhabitants of his conquered planets, then to make his enemies devoutly loyal to him. Having worked out that the mule is also attempting to find the location of the second foundation, Beta Dariel kills Miss before he can reveal where the second foundation is. Beta explains that she regrets her actions, but the secret had to be kept from the mule at all costs. Magnifico reveals that Beta's suspicions are correct and that he is the mule and has been laboring to find the second foundation in order to start his own second empire, hundreds of years before the Selden plan is to be complete. Dismayed at making a mistake which allowed Beta to see through his disguise, he leaves Trantor to rule over his conquered planets while continuing his own search. Second Foundation As the mule comes closer to finding it, the mysterious Second Foundation comes briefly out of hiding to face the threat directly. It is revealed to be a collection of the most intelligent humans in the galaxy. While the First Foundation has developed the physical sciences, the Second Foundation has been developing the mental sciences. Using the might of its strongest minds, the Second Foundation ultimately wears down the mule. His destructive attitude is adjusted to a benevolent one. He returns to rule over his kingdom peacefully for the rest of his life, without any further thought of conquering the Second Foundation. The First Foundation, learning of the implications of the Second, who will be the true inheritor of Selden's promised future empire, greatly resents Eta Euro, and seeks to find and destroy it, believing it can manage without it. 
after many attempts to unravel the only clue Selden had given as to the Second Foundation's whereabouts, the Foundation is led to believe the Second Foundation is located on Terminus. By developing a technology which causes great pain to telepaths, the Foundation uncover a group of fifty of them, and destroys them, believing it has thereby won. However, the Second Foundation has planned for this eventuality, and has sent fifty of its members to their deaths as martyrs to preserve its anonymity. At the very end, the Second Foundation is revealed to be located on the former Imperial homeworld of Trantor itself. The clue at Star's End was not a physical clue, but instead based on an old saying, all roads lead to Trantor, and that is where all stars end. Selden, being a social scientist and not a physical one, placed the two foundations at opposite ends of the galaxy, but not in a physical sense. Foundation was located on Terminus, out in the periphery, where the Empire's influence was minimal. Second Foundation was hidden on Trantor, where, even in its dying days, the Empire's power and culture was strongest. Foundation's Edge Believing the Second Foundation still exists, Golan Trevise is sent by the current mayor of the Foundation, Harla Brano, to uncover the group while accompanied by a scholar named Janov Pilarat. The reason for their belief is the Selden plan appears to be proceeding fully on course, despite all the disruptions caused by the mule. They attribute this fact to unknown interventions by the Second Foundation. After sharing a few conversations with each other, Tredvised comes to believe the Second Foundation lies on a planet in which Polarit is an expert to Euro the mythical planet of Earth. No such planet exists in any database, yet several myths and legends all refer to it, and it is Tredvised's idea that the planet is deliberately being kept hidden. Meanwhile, Stagendibal, a prominent member of the Second Foundation, discovers a simple locale Euro who lives on the same planet as the Second Foundation a Euro has had a minor alteration made to her mind. This alteration is far more delicate than anything the Second Foundation can do and, as a result, he determines a greater force of Mentalix is operating in the galaxy a Euro a force as powerful as the Mule himself. Having shown interest in Trevise earlier, Gendable endeavors to follow Trevise, reasoning that he should be able to find out who has altered the mind of the native. Using the few scraps of reliable information within the various myths, Tredvise and Polarit discover a planet called Gaia, which is inhabited solely by Mentalix, to such an extent that every organism and inanimate object on the planet shares a common mind. Having followed Tredvise by their own means, Brano and Gendibal reach Gaia at the same time. Meanwhile, Tredvise is made to decide between three alternatives for the future of the human race, the First Foundation's mastery of the physical world and its traditional political organization, the Second Foundation's mentalics, or Gaia's absorption of the entire galaxy into one shared, harmonious intellect. After Tredvise makes his decision, the intellect of Gaia adjusts Brano's mind so she believes she has become victorious and conquered the planet and Gendibal is sent back to the Second Foundation under the impression that the Second Foundation is victorious and should continue as normal. Tredvise remains uncertain as to why he has chosen Gaia as the correct outcome for the future. Foundation and Earth Still uncertain about his decision, Trevise continues on with the search for Earth along with Polarit and a local of Gaia, advanced in Mentalix, known as Bliss Inobiarella. Eventually, Trevise finds three sets of coordinates which are very old. Adjusting them for time, he realizes that his ship's computer does not list any planet in the vicinity of the coordinates. When he physically visits each location, he discovers an uncharted planet, Aurora, Solaria, and finally Melpomenia. After searching and facing different dilemmas on each planet, none has given him the answers he seeks. Aurora and Melpomenia are long deserted, but Solaria contains a small population which is extremely advanced in the field of Mentalix. When their lives are threatened, Bliss uses her abilities to destroy the Solarian who is about to kill them. This leaves behind a small child, who will be put to death if left alone, so Bliss makes the decision to keep the child as they quickly escape the planet. Eventually, Trevise discovers Earth, but it, again, contains no satisfactory answers for him. However, it dawns on Trevise that the answer may not be on Earth but on Earth's satellite a Euro the Moon. 
upon approaching the planet, they are drawn closer and enter inside the moon's core, where they meet a robot named Adeniel Olivac. Olivac explains that he has been guiding human history for thousands of years, and this is the reason the Selden plan had remained on course, despite the interventions by the mule. Oliva also states he is at the end of his runtime and, despite replacement parts and more advanced brains, he is going to die shortly. He explains that no robotic brain can be developed to replace his current one, and to continue assisting with the benefit of humanity a Euro, which may come under attack by beings from beyond our galaxy a Euro he must meld his mind with an organic intellect. Once again, Trevise is put in the position of deciding if having a liver meld with the child's superior intellect would be in the best interests of the galaxy. The decision is left ambiguous as it is also implied that the melding of the minds may be to the child's benefit and that she may have sinister intentions about it. Development and Themes The early stories were inspired by Edward Gibbon's The History of the Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. The plot of the series focuses on the growth and reach of the Foundation against a backdrop of the decline and fall of the Galactic Empire. The themes of Asimov's stories were also influenced by the political tendency in SF fandom, associated with the Futurians, known as Michelism. The focus of the books is the trends through which a civilization might progress, specifically seeking to analyze their progress, using history as a precedent. Although many science fiction novels such as 1984 or Fahrenheit 451 do this, their focus is upon how current trends in society might come to fruition, and act as a moral allegory on the modern world. The Foundation series, on the other hand, looks at the trends in a wider scope, dealing with societal evolution and adaptation rather than the human and cultural qualities at one point in time. Furthermore, the concept of psychohistory, which gives the events in the story a sense of rational fatalism, leaves little room for moralization. Hari Seldon himself hopes that his plan will reduce 30,000 years of Dark Ages and barbarism to a single millennium, a goal of exceptional moral gravity. Yet events within it are often treated as inevitable and necessary, rather than deviations from the greater good. For example, the Foundation slides gradually into oligarchy and dictatorship prior to the appearance of the Galactic Conqueror, known as the Mule who was able to succeed through the random chance of an empathic telepathic mutation. But, for the most part, the book treats the purpose of Selden's plan as unquestionable, and that slide as being necessary in it, rather than mulling over whether the slide is, on the whole, positive or negative. The books also wrestle with the idea of individualism. Hari Selden's plan is often treated as an inevitable mechanism of society, a vast mindless mob mentality of quadrillions of humans across the galaxy. Many in the series struggle against it, only to fail. However, the plan itself is reliant upon the cunning of individuals such as Selva Hardin and Hobber Mello to make wise decisions that capitalize on the trends. The Mule, a single individual with remarkable mental powers, topples the foundation and nearly destroys the Selden plan with his special, unforeseen abilities. To repair the damage the mule inflicts, the second foundation deploys a plan which turns upon individual reactions. Psychohistory is based on group trends and cannot predict with sufficient accuracy the effects of extraordinary, unforeseeable individuals, and as originally presented, the second foundation's purpose was to counter this flaw. Later novels would, however, identify the plan's uncertainties that remained at Selden's death as the primary reason for the existence of the Second Foundation, which had retained the capacity to research and further develop psychohistory. Asimov unsuccessfully tried to end the series with Second Foundation. However, because of the predicted thousand years until the rise of the next empire, the series lacked a sense of closure. For decades, fans pressured him to write a sequel. In 1982, Asimov gave in after a 30-year hiatus, and wrote what was at the time a fourth volume, Foundation's Edge. This was followed shortly thereafter by Foundation and Earth. The story of this volume ties up all the loose ends, but opens a brand new line of thought in the last dozen pages. According to his widow Janet Asimov, he had no idea how to continue after Foundation and Earth, so he started writing the prequels. The Foundation series. Merging with other series, 
The series is set in the same universe as Asimov's first published novel, Pebble in the Sky, although Foundation takes place about 10,000 years later. Pebble in the Sky became the basis for the Empire series. Then, at some unknown date Asimov decided to merge the Foundation Empire series with his Robot series. Thus, all three series are set in the same universe, giving them a combined length of 15 novels, and a total of about 1,500,000 words. The merge also created a time span of the series of around 20,000 years. Timeline Inconsistencies Early on during Asimov's original world building of the Foundation universe, he established within the first published stories a chronology placing the tales about 50,000 years into the future from the time they were written. This precept was maintained in the pages of his later novel Pebble in the Sky, wherein Imperial archaeologist Bell Arvidan refers to ancient human strata discovered in the Sirius sector dating back some 50,000 years. However, when Asimov decided decades later to retroactively integrate the universe of his Foundation and Galactic Empire novels with that of his robot stories, a number of changes and minor discrepancies surfaced at a Euro the character of Daniel Oliva was established as having existed for some 20,000 years, with the original robot novels featuring the character occurring not more than a couple of millennia after the early 21st century Susan Galvin short stories. Also, in Foundation's Edge, mankind was referred to as having possessed interstellar space travel for only 22,000 years, a far cry from the 50 millennia of earlier works. In the spring of 1955, Asimov published an early timeline in the pages of Thrilling Wonder Stories magazine based upon his thought processes concerning the Foundation universe's history at that point in his life, which vastly differs from its modern era counterpart. Many included stories would later be either jettisoned from the later chronology or temporally relocated by the author. Also, the aforementioned lengthier scope of time was changed. For example, in the original 1950s timeline, humanity does not discover the hyperspatial drive until around 5000 AD, whereas in the reincorporated robot universe chronology, the first interstellar jump occurs in 2029 AD, during the events of I, Robot. Fictional Timeline Below is a summarized timeline for events detailed in the series. All dates are quoted in Galactic Era and Foundation Era which starts in 12,068 GE. Other authors, Asimov's novels covered only 500 of the expected 1,000 years it would take for the Foundation to become a galactic empire. The Foundation universe was once again revisited in 1989's Foundation's Friends, a collection of short stories written by many prominent science fiction authors of that time. Orson Scott Card's The Originist clarifies the founding of the Second Foundation shortly after Selden's death. Harry Turtle Dove's Trantor Falls tells of the efforts by the Second Foundation to survive during the sacking of Trantor, the Imperial capital and Second Foundation's home. And George Zebrowski's Foundation's conscience is about the efforts of a historian to document Selden's work following the rise of the Second Galactic Empire. Also, Shortly before his death in 1992, Asimov approved an outline for three novels, known as the Caliban Trilogy by Roger McBride Allen, set between Robots and Empire and the Empire series. The Caliban Trilogy describes the terraforming of the Spacer world Inferno, a planet where an ecological crisis forces the Spacers to abandon many long-cherished parts of their culture. Allen's novels echo the uncertainties that Asimov's later books express about the three laws of robotics, and in particular the way a thoroughly roboticized culture can degrade human initiative. After Asimov's death and at the request of Janet Asimov and the Asimov Estates representative, Ralph Vicinanza approached Gregory Benford, and asked him to write another Foundation story. He eventually agreed, and with Vicinanza and after speaking to several authors about the project, formed a plan for a trilogy with two hard SF writers broadly influenced by Asimov and of unchallenged technical ability, Greg Bear and David Brin. Foundation's Fear takes place chronologically between Part 1 and Part 2 of Asimov's second prequel novel, Ford the Foundation. Foundation and Chaos is set at the same time as the first chapter of Foundation, filling in background. Foundation's triumph covers ground following the recording of the holographic messages to the Foundation, and ties together a number of loose ends. 
these three books are now claimed collectively to be a second Foundation trilogy. In an epilogue to Foundation's Triumph, Brin noted he could imagine himself or a different author writing a sequel to Foundation's Triumph, feeling that Hari Seldon's story was not yet necessarily finished. He later published a possible start of such a book on his website. More recently, the Asimov estate authorized publication of another trilogy of robot mysteries by Mark W. Tiedemann. These novels, which take place several years before Asimov's Robots and Empire, are Mirage, Chimera, and Aurora. These were followed by yet another robot mystery, Alexander C. Irvin's Have Robot, Will Travel, set five years after the Tiedemann trilogy. Novels by various authors are loosely connected to the Robot series, but contain many inconsistencies with Asimov's books, and are not generally considered part of the Foundation series. In November 2009, the Isaac Asimov estate announced the upcoming publication of Robots and Chaos, the first volume in a trilogy featuring Susan Calvin by fantasy author Mickey Zucker Reichert. The book was published in November 2011 under the title I, Robot, to protect. Cultural Impact Impact in nonfiction, in learned optimism, psychologist Martin Sligman identifies the Foundation series as one of the most important influences in his professional life, because of the possibility of predictive sociology based on psychological principles. He also lays claim to the first successful prediction of a major historical event, in the 1988 U.S. elections, and he specifically attributes this to a psychological principle. Paul Krugman winner of the 2008 Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences, credits the Foundation series with turning his mind to economics, as the closest existing science to psychohistory. Businessman and entrepreneur Elon Musk counts the series among the inspirations for his career. In the non-fiction PBS series Cosmos, Carl Sagan referred to an Encyclopedia Galactica in the episode Encyclopedia Galactica, and, who speaks for Earth. Impact in Fiction and Entertainment In 1965, the Foundation trilogy beat several other science fiction and fantasy series to receive a special Hugo Award for Best All-Time Series. It is still the only series so honored. Asimov himself wrote that he assumed the one-time award had been created to honor the Lord of the Rings, and he was amazed when his work won. Science Fiction Parodies such as Douglas Adams' The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and Harry Harrison's Bill, The Galactic Hero, often display clear Foundation influences. For instance, the guide of the former is spoof of the Encyclopedia Galactica, and the series actually mentions the Encyclopedia by name, remarking that it is rather dry, and consequently sells fewer copies than the guide. The latter also features the ultra-urbanized imperial planet Helia, often parodying the logistics such a planet city would require, but that Asimov's novel downplays when describing Trantor. In 1995, Donald Kingsbury wrote Historical Crisis, which he later expanded into a novel, Psychhistorical Crisis. It takes place about 2,000 years after Foundation, after the founding of the Second Galactic Empire. It is set in the same fictional universe as the Foundation series, in considerable detail, but with virtually all Foundation-specific names either changed, or avoided. The novel explores the ideas of psychohistory in a number of new directions, inspired by more recent developments in mathematics and computer science, as well as by new ideas in science fiction itself. The oboe like Holofana in Matt Groening's animated television series Futurama is based directly upon the Vasi Sona, which Magnifico plays in Foundation and Empire. The Vasi Sonner is also mirrored in an episode of Special Unit 2, where a child's television character plays an instrument that induces mind control over children. During the 2006 a Euro 2007 Marvel Comics Civil War crossover storyline, in Fantastic Four No. 542 Mr. Fantastic revealed his own attempt to develop psychohistory, saying he was inspired after reading the Foundation series. According to lead singer Ian Gillen, the hard rock band Deep Purple's song The Mule is based on the Foundation character, yes, The Mule was inspired by Asimov. It's been a while but I'm sure you've made the right connection. Asimov was required reading in the 60s. Radio Adaptation, an eight-part radio adaptation of the original trilogy, 
with sound design by the BBC Radiophonic Workshop, was broadcast on BBC Radio 3 in 1973 a Euro one of the first BBC radio drama serials to be made in stereo. A BBC Seven rerun commenced in July 2003. Adapted by Patrick Tull and Mike Stott, the dramatisation was directed by David Kane and starred William Eadle as Harry Seldon, with Geoffrey Beavers as Gal Dornick, Lee Montague as Selva Hardin, Julian Glover as Hobber Mello, Dinsdale Landon as Belle Royce, Morris Denham as Billing Missing Brunella Scales as Lady Callier. Film adaptation, by 1998. New Line Cinema had spent $1.5 million developing a film version of the Foundation trilogy. The failure to develop a new franchise was partly a reason the studio signed on to produce the Lord of the Rings film trilogy. On July 29, 2008, New Line Cinema co-founders Bob Shea and Michael Lynn were reported to have been signed on to produce an adaptation of the trilogy by their company Unique Pictures for Warner Brothers. However, Columbia Pictures successfully bid for the screen rights on January 15, 2009, and then contracted Roland Emmerich for direction. Emmerich and Michael Weimer were named as producers. There has been no development of a film since. List of books within the Foundation universe The author's note of prelude to Foundation contains the chronological ordering of Asimov's science fiction books, in which he also said, they were not written in the order in which they should be read. Ford The Foundation does not appear in Asimov's list, as it was not yet published at the time, and the order of the Empire novels in Asimov's list is not entirely consistent with other lists. For example, the 1983 Ballantine Books printing of the Robots of Dawn lists the Empire novels as, The Stars, Like Dust, The Currents of Space, and Pebble in the Sky. Given that the latter two books of this list include Trantor and that The Stars, Like Dust does not, these two books possibly were accidentally reversed in Asimov's list. The Complete Robot and Ori, Robot, Caves of Steel, The Naked Sun, The Robots of Dawn, Robots and Empire, The Currents of Space, The Stars, Like Dust, Pebble in the Sky, Prelude to Foundation, Ford the Foundation, Foundation, Foundation and Empire, Second Foundation, Foundation's Edge, Foundation and Earth. An expanded and corrected strictly chronological reading order for the books is, another alternative is to read the books in their original order of publication, since reading the Foundation prequels prior to reading the Foundation trilogy fundamentally alters the original narrative structure of the trilogy by spoiling what were originally presented. As plot surprises. In that same author's note, Asimov noted that there is room for a book between robots and empire and the currents of space and that he could follow Foundation and Earth with additional volumes. Tangential books, while not mentioned in the above list, the books The End of Eternity and Nemesis are also referenced in the series. The End of Eternity is vaguely referenced in Foundation's Edge, where a character mentions the Eternals, whose task it was to choose a reality that would be most suitable to humanity. In Ford the Foundation, Hari Seldon refers to a 20,000-year-old story of a young woman that could communicate with an entire planet that circled a sun named Nemesis, a reference to Nemesis. In Nemesis, the main colony is one of the 50 settlements, a collection of orbital colonies that form a state. The 50 settlements possibly were the basis for the 50 spacer worlds in the robot stories. The implication at the end of Nemesis that the inhabitants of the off-Earth colonies are splitting off from Earth-bound humans could also be connected to a similar implication about the spaces in Mark W. Timmy Demand's robot books. On the other hand, these references might be just jokes by Asimov, and the stories mentioned could be just those really written by himself. Furthermore, Asimov himself did not mention the end of eternity in the series listing from Prelude to Foundation. As for Nemesis, it was written after Prelude to Foundation, but in the author's note Asimov explicitly states that the book is not part of the Foundation series, but that someday he might tie it to the others. Nemesis also touches on a pair of short stories published in Asimov's collection, Gold, dealing with the Fifty Settlements. Major characters, Hari Seldon, leader of the psychhistorical movement which creates the Foundation and the Seldon Plan. First First Speaker of the Second Foundation, First Minister of the Galactic Empire under Cleon I, after Ito de Mertzel Giscard Reventlov, 
The first robot able to alter human minds, Adeniel Oliva, a humanoid robot who organizes the creation of both the Selden Plan and Gaia and Galaxia, he also assumes the names Cheta Humin and Ito de Mertzel. The Mule, a mutant who was extremely adept at altering human emotions, Durs Van Abeli, Selden's wife and protector, known as the Tiger Woman for her physical prowess and swiftness to action, she is eventually revealed to be a humanoid robot like Daniil. Hugo Amaral, Selden's colleague, a heat incurred from the Dal sector of Trantor, Emperor Cleon I, in Tun Dynasty, Emperor during the first part of Hare Selden's stay on Trantor, Salva Hardin, first mayor of Terminus, first foundationer to realize the farce of the Encyclopedia Galactica, Gal Dornick, one of the last psych historians to join the project, Hobber Mello, the first merchant prince during the Foundation's trader days, Bel Rios, general of the Galactic Empire, Golan Trevise, councilman of Terminus who discovers the secret location of Earth, Janot Pilarat, historian, accompanies Trevise, Arcady Dariel, granddaughter of Beta Dariel, who theorizes a location of the Second Foundation, Beta Dariel, Grandmother of Arcady Dariel, was instrumental in the defeat of the mule. Rake Selden, Hari Selden's adopted son from the Dal sector of Trantor, Wanda Selden, Rake Selden's eldest daughter who later becomes a psych historian and second first speaker of the Second Foundation, Preem Pilva, a farmer living on Trantor, Bling Miss, thought to be first person to discover the location of the Second Foundation. See also, Earth, Notes. References External links, 15 book reading order as suggested by Asimov from author's note of prelude to Foundation Doubleday, Johnny Pez's complete chronological listing of all stories in the series, The Foundation Trilogy.